Hey, thanks for tuning in to The Daily Drive. My name is Mike Bro, and we are currently walking through a story in John chapter 4. In fact, we've already unpacked the first three chapters of John, starting back on New Year's Day. So if you're new to the podcast, you can go back and you can see where we've been together. We spend just about six or seven minutes each weekday trying to get to know God better by spending some time in His Word. So let me just pick up where we left off yesterday. Jesus intentionally goes to a place that no other Jewish person intentionally went to. It was a place called Samaria. There was big-time strife, racism, and judgmentalism between the two people groups. They saw each other as, you know, those people. It says this in verse 5. So he, Jesus, came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. Near the plot of ground, Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. Now, the Jewish day began at 6 a.m., so you can do the math, and you can see that Jesus was sitting there at that well at high noon, in the heat of the day. And that well would have been a pretty lonely place around noon. You see, women in that culture would typically go fill their water pots at dawn or sundown when it was much, much cooler. Nobody, I mean nobody, came to do that at noon, unless you didn't want to be seen, unless you didn't want to walk up and hear the huddle of whispers fall silent. Verse 7, when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. Now, this is one of the things I love most about Jesus. He breaks all kinds of rules here. First of all, if you read the whole text, you'll see that he is sitting there alone because he has sent his disciples into town to buy food. Samaritan food. Food that they were technically not supposed to eat. Jews often said they would rather eat swine's flesh than let Samaritan food ever touch their lips. So you know Jesus' guys had to be shaking their heads, walking into town, thinking, what the heck are we doing? I think he might be stretching us again. And also, here is a Jewish man speaking to a Samaritan woman, a Jewish rabbi associating with a Samaritan outcast, asking a drink from a Samaritan vessel that a Samaritan hand had touched. All of this, all of it was absolutely unheard of. Now imagine being this woman. We talked yesterday how she has a past. She's got a rep that she's not proud of. She's got her head down, just trying to get in and out as quickly as possible. She's trying to avoid all the small town gossip and all the glares. And then, as she approaches the well, she looks up. And there is some guy sitting there at the rocky base of the well. And she notices his clothing. He's a Jew. And she's well aware of the history between the Jews and Samaritans. And I'm sure she's thinking, oh, great. What is he doing there? Oh, no one is ever here at this time of day. Okay, okay, just keep your head down. Keep your head down. Avoid eye contact. Just get your water and get out of here. But when she gets there, the man smiles at her and says, excuse me, would you mind giving me a drink? Verse 9, the woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Did you catch that for the Jews refuse to have anything to do with Samaritans? Here's something I want you to know about Jesus. Jesus doesn't refuse anyone. I've said it before, but the people least like Jesus liked Jesus and he liked them. And I'm telling you, he would like you too. I kept inviting a friend to church who had a rough past, a reputation he was not proud of at all. He would always say when I would invite him, he said, man, if I ever walked into church, man, the roof would cave in. Well, he finally mustered up the courage and he came. And I saw him afterwards in the lobby and he was pretty emotional after a message about God's love and moving past your past. So I just walked up to him, gave him a hug and said, hey, dude, check it out. We still got a roof. I'm telling you, Jesus likes you. He wants to do life with you. And I think it's so cool that when nobody else would, Jesus takes a risk and meets this woman at one of her most basic human needs. She just needed some company. She needed someone who would talk to her instead of about her. And Jesus knew that she especially needed a man to look at her differently than other men did. She needed someone who would not refuse to have anything to do with her based on her past, her present, her race, her religion, her reputation. He knew she needed a friend. Love was his mission, and tenderness was his delivery system. As we walk through John, I hope you will see how disarming and inclusive Jesus is. His love breaks through so many barriers. He does not refuse anyone. And I'm personally grateful 
that Jesus didn't refuse to have anything to do with me. And he won't refuse you either. He wants to meet you right where you are today, who you are today, the condition you are in today as is. Past, flaws, imperfections, screw-ups, addictions, confusion, baggage, and all. That's who he wants to meet with today. That's who he wants to hang out with. That's who he loves. You. So if you've got an empty bucket, you got an empty soul, you got an empty life, bring it to him. He will not refuse you. We'll pick up this story again tomorrow. Hope you have a great day.